Hi, Charles. It was interesting last year with Needham. He played, obviously, really well, but then struggled like everyone against Buffalo. And then you bring in Justin Coleman. And I know you can't speak, obviously, for Flo and Chris Greer, but is the thinking there that you hope, you know, with two guys, one will emerge as a clear-cut slot for you? Is the hope that Justin's presence will make uh, Nick even better, potentially? You know, really right now, we're just focused on improving, you know, from a fundamental standpoint. And uh, both of those guys are diligent workers. Justin has been a good football player in this league for a long time. And Nick, uh, you know, as you said, has definitely progressed, you know, uh, over the period of time that he's been here. Uh, you know, competition is good for everybody, you know, in the building. So uh, it's good to have Justin. Uh, it's good to, you know, learn from his experiences in the same system. And uh, again, you know, those guys are both focusing on improving right now. So we're happy where they're at. Travis. Hey, Coach, thank you for your time today. Yes, sir. Uh, one of my favorite things to watch at practice last year and games as well was Byron Jones just always out there early and getting his work in. And he talked a lot about working with you on the ball skills and he winds up with a career high in interceptions last year. I'm wondering kind of two parts here. One, how is he progressing in that area with the ball skills and his, you know, this point of his career, but also what is a player of his, you know, caliber and of his resume working that way due to the rest of the room and the rest of the players, how does that kind of have a snowball effect on those guys? You know, when you have a, a, a guy like Byron Jones, uh, who, who number one from a, example standpoint you know it is a great example from everybody in the room from you know his routine his attention to detail and he's definitely self-motivated uh for a guy from a ball skill standpoint you know uh it was said that you know he didn't have the ball skills this or that and he just worked on it and worked on it and worked on it simply because he just wanted to improve it's not that he couldn't do it he just improved and he you know made it a focus uh, so he improved, he challenged the ball. And, uh, you know, I think guys saw that. I think guys saw that, you know, he was willing to be uncomfortable uh, to improve his game. And, you know, that is a ripple effect to everybody in the room, you know, uh, because from a guy like Byron Jones, who's had success in this league, who came in, worked and developed, you know, that really just makes all the younger guys want to, you know, go and raise a level of their game and really follow in his lead. Safin. Coach, uh, congratulations on your promotion, man. I want to ask you, what, what did you, um, in the last three years here that you've been with the Dolphins, you know, how grateful and uh, for you for the opportunity and how it came about? Uh, very, very grateful. Uh, you know, I came, came here, obviously, like you said, three years ago, you know, as a coaching assistant and just, you know, did whatever was asked of me. You know, obviously I had experience coaching defensive backs, you know, through my career in college. Uh, and, you know, working with Josh Boyer, working with uh, Coach Flores, um, you know, those two, those are two guys that not only has been in this defense for an extended, extended period of time, but coaching this defense at a high level. So to be able to be put in a position to learn from those guys, uh, to make myself a better coach uh, in this league, it's, it was, it's a very humbling, uh, it's, it was a difficult process, but it made me better each day. So I'm definitely thankful to, uh, you know, be here working with these guys that we have in the secondary and, you know, really to raise a standard in the secondary. I really, uh, I really like what you just said about Byron and, and his, how he was uncomfortable to, uh, you know, improve his game and it was a ripple effect. Uh, well, can you speak a little bit more to that ripple effect? How, how did you see guys um, trying to be uncomfortable so they can improve? Well, you know, we, our, our approach is to, to get better, to get better, you have to make yourself uncomfortable, you know, uh, and it's, it's, it's everybody, you know, you know, when you're going to improve your footwork, you know, it's spending time on it, you know, making yourself uncomfortable to say, this is something that I want to get better at. This is something that I want to spend time doing. Okay. And, you know, once he was doing that coming out early, well, if you see Byron Jones come out early and then I'm a rookie, rookie corner, well, I'm gonna come out early. You know, not only this is a guy that uh, has played corner in the league, but he's played corner at a high level and he's working like he's a rookie. Does that make sense? So I think when guys, you know, they come in the room and they see that and they come in the room and this guy's asking questions, this guy's taking notes, uh, you know, Byron takes notes and asks questions like it's day one, which for me as a position coach, uh, that's something I'm very thankful for to have that guy as an example to everybody in the room. Hello. Hey, Charles, it's very nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Uh, 
I was I was looking at your bio and and it's interesting. You know, you, you say here that you're from Grand Prairie, Texas. I've never been to Grand Prairie, so I don't know what there. <laughs> it's in the great state of Texas. Been, yeah. I've also never been to West Texas A&M, Texas mm -hmm. A&M Commerce, Southeastern Oklahoma State, or Arkansas Tech. Can you just talk about your journey and and how what what you might say to a young coach in the profession who you know, wonders if they can make it from a West Texas A&M to the National Football League. You know, my journey, uh, I, I, as you just listed, you know, it's, uh, I started at East Central, my alma mater. It's a division two. So all of those schools you name are a division two school. So I'm a small school guy. Uh, I've always wanted to coach at the highest level, uh, compete with the coaches at the highest level and coach the best players. But, you know, in each stop that uh, I was able to have, the most important thing for me were my players. The most important thing for me was improving them. And, you know, Southeastern Oklahoma State for me was my USC. It was the best college that I've ever been been to, you know, A&M Commerce or uh, West Texas A&M. That was my that was my big time, you know, and that's how I really wanted to approach uh, each school, because, you know, when that next jump happened, I didn't want to put that jump on a pedestal because football is football no matter where you're at. You know, in Division Two, you know, those guys are on partial scholarships and, you know, I have to make those guys peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and make them, you know, uh, have pizza dinners and everything. Now, my guys in the NFL, you know, they really don't want any peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They're good. They're good on that. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that that's definitely been a uh, process and it's been a really humbling journey. And I'm thankful that I took that route because it really makes me appreciate talking to you guys right now a lot more. Uh, and then as far as younger coaches that, you know, are going through that process, I would just say, be where your feet are. You know, the, the most important opportunity that you have is the one that you're at right now. And I feel that if we take that approach as coaches and we concentrate on the people which are right in front of us, which are our kids, I think wherever you go will be a fulfilling journey for you. That was really good. And I appreciate you taking the time. I, I want to, I'm interested in, one more follow-up mm -hmm. approach to coaching players mm -hmm. as briefly as you can, how would you summarize what, you, how you try to get that done? Most effective con connection with the, with the players. You know, uh, my approach is, you know, players are people. And I think people given honesty and respect, if you start there, bottom line, before you give any critique, before you give, any demand, if you start with honesty and respect, you can really coach the man first, and then that gives you a chance to coach the player. So I always want to start there with each one of my individuals, uh, you know, give them a respect, you know, earn their respect day in and day out with my work ethic and my development or my, uh, my attention to detail to them as a person. And I think once I start there from a basis, then I can work on the technique, the footwork, the ball skills, uh, and then the, ultimately that's my approach. Thanks so much, coach. Good luck to you. Thank you. Barry. All right, Charles, I wanted to ask you if you've watched any tape of Trill Williams before the draft, what you think you're getting with him. And also you have a handful of really young corners who either haven't played an NFL game, the Javaris Davis types, obviously Trill Williams, et cetera, or have played just a little like Terrell Bonds. Is it fun for you? Is it exciting to see which of those you and Gerald can mold into productive NFL players? Because this franchise has had success molding guys, undrafted, overlooked, the Zach Steelers, Preston Williams. Mm -hmm. So that and also Trill Williams, just the skill set there, please. Yeah, very excited. Well, Trill, you know, what he brings on his tape watch uh, coming out of Syracuse is he was a run and hit guy. Uh, he was a guy that was, you know, very physical on his tape. Uh, and he played some corner. He played some safety. So, you know, again, in our system, we like guys who are versatile and can do a lot of things. And then as far as Tino, JD, uh, you know, Terrell Bonds, the, you know, our younger guys, they're working diligently. They're doing a good job, asking a lot of questions. They work really hard and it's very, very important to them. And I would say all those guys are really good young men. Um, and it's been a joy to work with them. I'm very excited to see where their development will take them. Because, you, you know, we, you, you never know. You, we can project all we want, but, you know, we, we got to get in the grass and we got to practice. But as of right now, they're doing a great job. You know, they're learning. They're asking questions. They're working well together. So uh, I'm excited to see that work itself out. Hey, Coach. Uh, um, 
Hey, Coach. Appreciate, uh, we, I think we all really appreciate your time here and getting to know you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you, you spoke highly of Byron. I wanted to ask you about Xavier Howard. Um, you know, what's your relationship like with him? How do you kind of uh, motivate a player like that who's led the league in, in interceptions? And, um, you know, how do you think he can progress even more from, from last season? You know, me, me and Xavier, we have a great relationship. Uh, again, he's another guy from, you know, the, the, the guys learn a lot from Xavier as well from a preparation standpoint. You know, it's uh, pretty amazing to watch him, you know, to, to get 10 picks. It's not just you just go out there and get 10 picks. There's a lot of work that goes into it. So he does a great job with his preparation, understanding his opponent, understanding the situations that he's in. Uh, again, he's a guy who asks a lot of questions as well. Uh, he's very diligently diligent with his technique, uh, very detailed with his technique. And it's just as far as motivating, you know, those guys, I've, when, you, when you're working with top elite corners, just the simple fact that they got to go and match up against the number one receiver, that's motivating in itself. So when those guys go to work, they understand that I'm, to be at the top of my game, I got to go dominate the top receiver. So when he walks in the building, it's, I mean, he's already ready to go. Alan. Uh, hi, Charles. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. Uh, wanted to ask you what you've seen in terms of progress from Noeg Benogany from the time you started working with him. Seeing great progress with Noah. Uh, you know, Noah's a guy who played the position only for two years and uh, in college, obviously, you know, he's a great athlete, you know, came in, you know, didn't have an off season, but uh, he just went to work as soon as he got here. And, you know, uh, over the time that we've had him, he's done a really good job of, you know, understanding the scheme, you know, understanding multiple positions. That's what he's going through right now is, you know, being again, another versatile guy, versatile guy that can do more than just one thing. And he, uh, it's been a lot of growth. Um, I love where he's at. You know, he, again, he has a tremendous work ethic, attention to detail day in and day out. And uh, I believe in Noah and I'm glad he's here. And if I may follow, how much have you seen him picking the brain of either Byron or X? All the time, you know, you know, all, all the time. And as far as picking their brains, they wouldn't let him, you know, sit in a meeting without making him pick their brains. You know, that's what type of guys, that's what type of leaders those guys are. Uh, so, again, it's when, when you have a guy like Xavier Howard and Byron Jones sitting in your meeting room, if you're a corner, you really have no choice, uh, no choice to develop, you know, because those guys won't let you be average. Thank you.